Good morning. Welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Cooperative Ministry on this Sunday morning. I'm so glad you're able to join Tom and I as we begin our day on this third Sunday in Lent. Um, God bless you and uh, let us begin as we, we will with the drawn to the cross, our litany. On the cross, Jesus graces us with the gifts of forgiveness and life that we do not deserve. Our journey through Lent focuses on these glorious blessings from our Lord. In the grace of cross, thy glory, richly filling every hour, at the sin from human story is removed by his great power. Nothing we say or do can reunite us with God. Only through the blood of Christ are we brought together again with the Heavenly Father. Jesus came to the earth as both God and man to live the perfect life for us and die a cruel death in our place that we might have plenty have a place in glory. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. We went, uh, we went our own way and abandoned our God when we thought we could solve our problems alone, but Jesus came to bring us back home. I once was lost, but now I'm found. We failed to recognize when things went wrong and did not acknowledge our fault for our wayward behavior. I was blind, but now I see. Open my eyes to your goodness to me, O Lord, that I might view the richness of your love. Show me the outpouring of divine benefits, O Lord, that I might gracious, uh, graciously receive them with joy. Bring me an understanding of your endless supply of spiritual offerings to me, O Lord, that I might generously respond to you in acts of Christ-like kindness toward others. We receive your gracious favor from the death upon the tree. Let us always daily savor, savor that in you we are made free. And now let us begin our daily uh, morning prayer. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give, give glory to, although the Lord is near to those who call on him, O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. O come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 42. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, a thirst for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while all day long they say to me, where, uh, where now is your God? I pour out my soul when I think of these things. How I went through the multitude and led them into the house of God. With a voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who kept keep holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put the trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him, who is the help of my countenance and my God. My soul is heavy within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from the peak of Nizar among the heights of Hermon. One deep calls to another in the noise of your cataracts and your rapids and floods have gone over me. The Lord grants his loving kindness in the daytime. In the night season, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I will say to the God of my strength, why have you forgotten me? And why do I go so heavily while the, uh, while the enemy oppresses me? While my bones are uh, being broken, my enemies mock me to my face. All day long they mock me and say to me, Where now is your God? Where are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will give you thanks to him, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Let us pray. Lord God, never failing fountain of life, through the saving waters of baptism, you called us from the depth of sin to the depths of mercy. Do not forget the trials of our exile, but from the wellspring of the word, satisfy our thirst for you, so that we may 
Come rejoice him to your holy mountain where you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, let's see what Joseph's up to now and today. From Genesis chapter 44, beginning with verse 1. Then he commanded the steward of his house, Fill the man's sack with food as much as they can carry, and put each man's money in the mouth of his sack, and put my cup and the silver cup in the mouth of the sack of the youngest, with his money for the grain. And he did as Joseph told him, and soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away from the, uh, with their asses. When they had gone but a short distance from the city, Joseph said to his steward, uh, Follow after the men, and when the, you overtake them, say to them, why have you returned evil for good? Why have you stolen my silver cup? Is it not from this that my Lord drinks and by this that he divi uh, divines? You have done wrong in so doing. When he overtook them, he spoke to them these words. They said to him, Why does my Lord speak such words as, as these? Far be it from your servants that they should do such a thing. Behold, the money which we found in the mouth of our sacks we brought back to you from the land of Canaan. Now, how then should we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? With whomever and your servants is, it is found, let him die, and we also will be my Lord's slaves. He said, Let it be as you say. He with whom it is found shall be my slave, and the rest of you shall be blameless. Then every man quickly lowered his sack to the ground, and every man opened his sack. As he searched, beginning with the eldest and ending with the youngest, the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they rent their clothes, and each man loaded his ass, and they returned to the city. When Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, he was still there, and they fell before him on the ground. Joseph said to them, What deed is this that you have done? Do you not know that such a man as I can indeed divine? And Judah said, What shall we say to you, my lord? What shall we speak? Or how can we clear ourselves? God has found out a guilt of ours of your servants. Behold, we are my Lord's slaves, but we and he also, in whose hand the cup has been found. But he said, Far be it from me that I should do so. Only the man in whose hand the cup was found shall be my slave. But as for you, go up in peace to your father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> And our second reading comes from Romans, the eighth chapter, beginning with verse one. There is therefore not no, no, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of the life is Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemns sin in the flesh in order that the just re uh, requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. We walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their mind on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their mind on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, and you in the spirit, but you are in the spirit, if in fact the spirit of God dwells in you, and, and one who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in him, although your bodies are dead because of sin, your spirits are alive because of righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be you. to God. And our holy gospel comes from St. John, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is come, coming, and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment because of he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear, him, his, hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Thank to you, you O Christ. Christ. 
In many and various ways, God spoke to the people of old by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. Let, uh, let justice roll down like water, and righteousness like an overflowing stream. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our lives. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <coughs> Let justice roll down like water, and righteousness like an overflowing stream. Let us pray. Father, you have taught us to overcome our sins by prayer, fasting, and works of mercy. When we are discouraged by our weakness, give us confidence in your love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we might not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. And in all that we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, and Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord Almighty bless us and direct our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. Well, thank you so very much for joining Tom and I on this Sunday morning, this third Sunday in Lent. God bless you, and I hope you have a safe day, and I hope you'll be with us tomorrow as well. Bye-bye.